The volunteers are well into their second day. After a sleepless night on the jungle floor, they're shattered. Volunteer Doug has failed to maintain contact with the group and is now completely lost. Lack of sleep is starting to affect his brain. And in particular, the frontal cortex, the thinking part of the brain. It's responsible for memory, speech, and problem solving. The cortex is a very hard working part of the brain. It's on the go all the time. It never really ceases its activity. Uh, and uh, because of this, it is very vulnerable to going without sleep because sleep is the only time when this part of the brain can actually ever recover. And simply because uh, they're awake doesn't mean they're in any fit, uh, any fit state for actually fighting. It's a problem the military takes very seriously. At Columbia University, Dr. Yakov Stern is employed by the U.S. military to find a cure for the effects of sleep deprivation. The first step would be to understand what kinds of brain networks are affected by sleep deprivation. And then the second step would be to say, OK, now that we understand that, how can we do something to reverse those effects? If Yakov is successful, sleepiness could soon become a thing of the past. Solo sailor Ellen MacArthur is embarking on her own battle against sleep. Ellen is competing in one of the world's most dangerous races. The Vendée Globe is a three-month around-the-world event from France, around Antarctica, and back. Ellen's boat is equipped with the very latest technology, but it's something as basic as sleep that's going to give her the edge. On shore, Dr. Claudio Stampi watches over her. Using a device worn on Ellen's wrist, Claudio is able to monitor her sleep patterns. By maximizing sleep when she needs it most, Claudio hopes to cut Ellen's sleep to just three or four hours a day. The way to maximize the effectiveness of that sleep is by dividing those three or four hours into shorter naps. By shorter naps, we're talking about 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes. We call that polyphasic sleep. The reason polyphasic sleep is effective is because when sleep deprived, we sink into deep sleep very quickly. Claudia believes that deep sleep is the most crucial. Thirty days into the race, and Ellen reaches the treacherous waters of the Southern Ocean. Thousands of miles from land, icebergs litter the freezing sea. To hit one would be fatal. It would rip the bottom from the boat, and Kingfisher would capsize. Sleeping in iceberg territory is dangerous business. Iceberg watch. The greatest danger is not sleeping for several days in a row. There will be times in a race where you are extremely busy, but what you need to try to do under those circumstances is to take some sleep. The solution is an extreme sleeping regime called cluster napping. Ellen takes her sleep in two or three minute bursts, briefly waking to check the horizon before going back to sleep. Oh, thank you, my feet warm. But even a few minutes puts Ellen in danger. 